If you follow me on Twitter, you may be aware that I've decided to start a nonprofit organization. And I created a website for it. I'm getting the business license and all kinds of stuff. Let me explain what it is and why I decided to do this. When I was a teenager, I wasn't allowed to have any friends. I wasn't allowed to have outsiders as friends. I could only have Jehovah's Witness friends. They set it up that way intentionally. Because if you have outsiders as friends, it makes you less reliant on the cult. This is a really common scenario in cults of various types. So when I was a teenager, I didn't have any friends because there weren't really many Jehovah's Witnesses my age in the congregation. And the ones that were there didn't really like me that much. So through my teen years, I was homeschooled for about four years, three or four years. And it was like a three-year period of complete social isolation complete social isolation. I didn't talk to another human being except for my two parents, both of whom were bipolar. They had bipolar disorder for three years. When I turned 17, I went back to high school, left homeschooling, and for the first time in my life, I started making friends, which of course was against the rules. You're not supposed to be friends with outsiders, but I did it anyways. And it was really good for my mental health. Problem is I was trying to experience all of the things that I didn't get to experience when I was in the cult without friends. So, I went to high school parties and hung out with people and I drank a little bit of alcohol and I smoked a cigarette and things like that. I had a worldly girlfriend. As time went on, some of the Jehovah's Witnesses in the congregation who were my age, they went to school with me. They were watching me and they told the elders what I was doing. And the elders called me in and told me that they were going to disfellowship me, basically. I was 18. On my 18th birthday, actually, my mom made me leave, kicked me out of the house, and I had nowhere to go. When you don't have any friends, when you didn't grow up knowing anybody who's willing to talk to you anymore, what do you do? I was just going to sit on a street corner. What else do you do? I called this girl I knew from school and I asked her if I could stay with her because who else is I going to call? And she said yes, but her grandparents didn't know. I had to sneak into her house through her bedroom window and live in there for like three weeks. You may hear that story and understand like that's what happened but really understanding the logistics of something like that is a completely different thing understanding that I had to piss in Gatorade bottles and Burger King cups so her family didn't know that I was there I had to plan when I would use a bathroom, wait until 4 o'clock in the morning when they were all asleep. She had to bring food back to her bedroom so I could eat. I had one pair of clothes. I had a shirt and a pair of pants and a pair of socks. I had to wear her clothes while she washed mine, when they did get washed. And I had to sneak out the window every day to go to work at Burger King. The point of the story is that there are homeless kids in the United States right now, many of which are there as a result of their cults shunning them, their parents shunning them, 
because they changed their mind on believing the religion. Nobody should have to go through that. It's wrong, and Jehovah's Witnesses encourage it. They want parents to do that to their kids of any age. So the point of the nonprofit is to help kids in that type of situation. Not just kids, but help anybody in that type of situation. I mean, I was 18 at that time, but I just got a message from somebody from my old congregation who is 33 and just now woke up like a year ago. He's completely embroiled in the religion in every way. He works for an elder at some business nearby, and if the elder found out that he, was, that he didn't believe anymore, he'd be fired. No longer able to support his family. The nonprofit that I'm creating is intended to help anybody, not just kids, but I want to help people who were in my specific situation. So I put up the website, it's apostaterefuge.org. I can't actually take donations or anything at this immediate moment. Um, actually, by the time you see this video, this clip, I may be able to take donations. It's possible. So go to the website and look on the front and find out if it's possible to donate. If it's not, you can add yourself to a mailing list and I'll let everybody on it know when it's possible to donate. But I'm waiting until I get approval from the IRS to be a full-blown charity before I take donations so that they are tax-deductible. Aside from donations, I actually intend to funnel money to it through my Etsy store. A lot of you guys probably know that I have an Etsy store. I intend to basically build it up through Etsy through like my retro game shop and things like that. I'm going to donate all the profits from certain items every month to the charity. So whether or not people are donating, whether or not anybody else is on my side, it's irrelevant. I will still be able to help people in this situation, even without donations. I have four main hopes or five main goals to help people. The first one will be providing a cell phone capable of social media communication so that people can talk to other people in the ex-cult community, like through Twitter and Discord and things like that. I want to make sure that they have a cell phone that functions so that they can talk to other people in their situation. Because social isolation is one of those things that cults push harder than anything. They want you to depend on them. So my goal is to break that dependency. I mean, when kids come to me, their, their dependency is going to be broken anyways. They're not going to have an option. They won't have anybody there to help them. They'll be sitting in some, somebody's room that they knew from school, eating their dinner, eating the person's dinner because they don't have any other way to get food. So I want to provide that life raft, if you will, to people who need it. The cell phone would be, uh, I'm hoping to spend about $400 per cell phone. I want it to be a decent cell phone, not like an iPhone 12 XR or whatever, but something that they can use to access Twitter and stuff. They're also going to need cell service, data and talk and text and everything. That would be about 45 a month. And I want to make sure that they have therapy. I want to give them access to therapy because I sure as shit needed it at that time. That would be like $80 a month if I use like betterhelp.com or e-counseling or talk space. And then I want volunteers to communicate with them to fill in the gaps of knowledge that they should be getting from the parents in their lives, for example. A lot of cults, for example, Jehovah's Witnesses, discourage kids from going to college. I want advisors there who would be able to talk to the person and explain how to go to college, explain what the FAFSA is and how to fill it out, explain what grants are and where to find them, where to find scholarships, 
how to take the GED, how to take the ACT, what prep books to read, everything, just absolutely anything. If they don't have any anywhere to live, then find out what, what homeless shelters there are in that area. Find out how they can make money quickly to, to get into somewhere. Find out how to sign up for food stamps. And then finally, as a last resort, if we can't find a food bank near them or food stamps or something, then give them $32 a week for food. It's not much, but it, it will prevent them from starving to death. So that, those are my goals with this nonprofit. And I've basically calculated that it will take about $2,500 per person per year, including administrative costs, like the cost of an office and web hosting and paying for the domain name and just everything, employee payroll to help people with various different things. It'll cost $2,500 per person per year. So every $2,500 we bring into the program, that's one year that a kid has to figure their life out and not die in the street like I nearly did. It has a long way to go. And like I said, I'm not relying solely on donations. It's going to get money from my Etsy store. It, I, I'm basically going to be funding it myself, if nothing else. But I'm hoping that I'll be able to get enough donations that I can help the maximum number of people. One more thing. I intend to fund it by creating a YouTube channel where I read out letters of disassociation, letters from family members, letters to family members, anything like that. So if you have any of those, then go to the link in the description and the pinned comment and send them to me.